Starting off this hour, the FBI is calling it a victory against homegrown terrorism. Five self-described anarchists were arrested after allegedly plotting to blow up a bridge near Cleveland. That bombing was supposed to take place on Occupy Wall Street's huge day of action on May Day. But the good guys rushed to the rescue, stopped the men in their tracks, and saved civilians from danger, right? Well, as it turns out, the government agency was actually instrumental in helping the Cleveland Five plan this terrorist bridge plot. The entire event was provoked and orchestrated by agent provocateurs. They supplied the motive, the means, and everything else to carry out the plot. Now, FBI entrapment in terrorism is nothing new. The agency currently has 15,000 undercover operatives in their ranks who get paid as much as $100,000 per assignment. And at least half of the latest 500 prosecutions related to terrorism have involved FBI entrapment. But the question remains, when the FBI foils its own terror plot, is it really preventing terrorism or is it just creating security theater? To dig further in this case, I was joined earlier by Stephen Webster, senior editor for Raw Story. He explained whether or not these sting operations are even necessary. Are they necessary? I'm not quite sure. But I think the FBI would argue that they are. Uh, and, and you're right to say that this is a pattern in their history. Throughout the FBI's history, they've often gotten close to the bad guys and let them believe they were going to carry out a nefarious plot only to pull the linchpin right at the last moment and reveal that their informants were running the show. Um, it's, it's tough to, to say, to paint with a broad brush if it's right or not. Some threats are, uh, you would imagine, more severe than others. Uh, as for these occupiers, well, it's really anybody's guesses as to whether they would have gone through with it. Do you think that they would have had the means to carry it out with F without the FBI involvement? I mean, you see that the FBI supplied the transportation, uh, the bombs, and pretty much everything else. Do you think that they would have had the means to do it? Well, it's really impossible to say, but it is quite uncomfortable to note how close the FBI's informant got with these guys. Uh, one of them, I believe, was even employed at this person's roofing company for a while. So uh, you see there's a very cozy relationship with law enforcement and these um, sketchy characters who you know, may or may not have had the impetus to do this. Regardless, they did appear to be sort of sympathetic to Occupy's Black Bloc, which for occupiers is really like a cancer. Right. Um, yeah, a lot of people have said that the Black Bloc is the cancer of the movement. Um, you know, Stephen, I just wanted to ask you, some would say that the recruitment methods that the FBI provocateurs use against would-be terrorists is similar to suicide bomber recruiters in the Middle East. I mean, they prey upon the emotionally deranged, financially down and out people and convince them to conduct terror plots. I mean, is this moral? Uh, I don't know if you can say whether it's moral or not. There's a lot about law enforcement that isn't moral, but many would see as necessary. I don't think that the FBI is right 100% of the time. I don't think they're wrong 100% of the time either. And without seeing, you know, all the individual case details, it's really impossible to say. I mean, this is a very gray area. Uh, was it wrong that they had um, a white supremacist radio host that was arrested uh, several years back? At Hal, Hal something, I don't recall his name at the moment. Um, he was one of their informants. Was it right that the American government was paying one of the most vocal white supremacists in the country to draw out crazies? I don't know. What do, you, what do you think about taxpayers funding this? I mean, here we are, there's figures of $100,000 and over paying these people to work on cases that take sometimes a year or more. I mean, do you think that this is a proper way to spend taxpayer resources to, to weed out domestic would-be terrorists? I really don't know on that either, but I think a lot of people, especially progressives and liberals, will have a problem with it. Uh, maybe even some conservatives who are really concerned about, you know, actual fiscal uh, conservation. Um, but as far as me, I, I, I really don't know. I'm more of a reporter. I, I don't have much of an opinion on it, but I do think some of the facts are alarming and people would be very surprised to find out. Well, Stephen, up until this point, at least I haven't seen, um, it's been mostly preying on Muslim communities. Uh, what do you think, you know, talk a little bit about the Cleveland Five as it's coined. Um, do you think that this is a new front kind of focusing on, what do you think the tie is to Occupy Wall Street? Do you think there was like a, a plan to do this on May Day? I mean, what are your thoughts on 
focusing now on people who aren't Muslim, trying to, to really get in and entrap them into terrorist plots? No, the FBI has been running counterintelligence operations like this for a very long time. It goes back to the 60s. It goes back to Richard Nixon. Um, it's that the Occupy has been targeted is unfortunate, but not surprising. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised to learn the Tea Party has been targeted as well. I mean, they, they look at right wing fundamentalists just as much as they look at some of the more vocal left wing, uh, left wing critics of this government. Um, I think that these individuals uh, in Ohio were unfortunately uh, misled and from, I mean, if, if the quotes in, in, in the court documents are accurate. Um, yeah. Talk a little bit about uh, the timing um, of this foiled plot on the big May Day action. Do you think that that was strategic, uh, you know, it kind of tainted a lot of the headlines for Occupy Wall Street? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was definitely a very unfortunate media hit. And I do think that the FBI probably had some role in fostering that date being selected, unfortunately. And do you think that this is, do you think the FBI is just grasping at straws here to justify the war on terror's domestic front? I mean, I know you said counterintelligence has been happening and a lot of, and spying and these methods have been going on since the 60s, but it just seems like they're ramped up so much after 9-11 and we see time and time again recently, especially in the past recent years of these foiled plots that were orchestrated by the FBI. Well, I wouldn't say they were orchestrated by the FBI, but they certainly were. Facilitated, out. facilitated. Yeah. I mean, is this just grasping at straws to justify the domestic front of the war on terror? To some degree, probably. Uh, behind the scenes, I'm sure that there's a lot of, um, you know, painting things with a broad brush in order to make it sound more dramatic than it really is. But, uh, by another degree, there are legitimate domestic terrorism threats, and uh, they're, you know, pretty much the only folks out there on a federal level who are really actively policing those. So, again, without going into the details of individual cases, some are more valid than others, and in some cases, though, the FBI has really grasped at straws. We'll definitely keep following these cases as they unfold. That was Stephen Webster, senior editor for Raw Story.